10 seconds. Stand by. And these females are off. 50 handstand push-ups. Followed by 50 toe to bar. 50 calories on the assault bike. 50 dumbbell step overs. 50 foot overhead lunge with the right arm and then 50 foot overhead walking lunge with the left arm. Time cap 22 minutes for these female athletes. The standard for the handstand push-up is that the athlete must start from a fully extended position on the wall, so arms and body in a straight line, lower themselves down, and right so now that their head touches the ground, and then push themselves back up so that they are back in that full extension. As we have action already, Frederic Fransen on lane four is your first female athlete out of those handstand push-ups. Laura Faulkner also on lane number six. She's off the handstand push-up wall. Kelly Friel, lane 10, working through the toes to bar. And lane 12, Martina Krusiak also working through those toe to bar. Now we've got several ladies all up and down the line working through these toe to bar reps. The athletes must touch both of their feet to the bar at the top between their hands for the rep to count. Laura Faulkner, 40 repetitions done on lane six. And Frederic Fransen, she has 35 reps done on lane four. And Laura Faulkner, lane number six, the first athlete to move on. She has one more rep to do. As on lane 12, Martina Krusiak gets her toe to bar done. So it's Faulkner and Krusiak in the lead after the toes to bar. Now we have a few more ladies join these two on the bikes. Honda Nielsen, lane 17, lane 16, Charlotte Spence, and Aneta Tucker on lane nine. Frederick Fronten on lane four as well. And most of these female athletes are already moving on to that 
set of 50 calories on the bike. Lane number 12, Martina Krysiak has 13 calories done. She was your leader with Laura Faulkner coming in after the toe to bar and Laura has 13 calories done. She's on lane six. But like we saw in that last men's heat, it's still anybody's game here. Nothing is set. Andre Ghanin was second to last man off the toe of the bar and he still won the entire event. We have right now Anita Tucker on lane nine with 15 calories already done. Lane 12, Martina Krysiak, 24 calories done. As Laura Faulkner, she's got 21 calories. Hannah Nielsen, 21 calories on lane 17. <laughs> Natalie Gertz on lane 11 has 22 calories done. So does Laura Hughes on lane 13. She's at 23. Lola Forgner is halfway with 25 calories on lane four. Lisa Lettner has 25 calories done. As Martina Krysiak on lane 12 only has 15 calories to go. When the athlete has five calories left, the judge will put their hand up. Laura Forker right now at 37, and Frederick Franzen at 35. Martina Krusiak coming up on 42 calories now, so she has eight cows left. Lane number 20, Lucy Majuri, judge's hand is up. She's been making quick work of these salt by calories and she has only one more cal to go before she can move on. And Martina Mar Krysiak, lane 12. One more cal for her as Lucy Majuri is going to be the first female athlete in this heat to get started with those box overs. And Martina Krusiak is your number two athlete in this first heat. And now we've got hands going up all across that line. And that means most of these females are getting ready to finish their calories and move on to the box step overs. We've got three females now, Laura Hughes, lane 13, Martina Krysiak, lane number 12, but Lucy Majuri is also done with her first set of six as they advance their box at the same time with Martina Krysiak. They're going rep for rep here, lanes 20 and 12. Laura Hughes also 
done with her first set of six. Lori's on lane six. But on lane 17, Honda Nielsen, your first female athlete to move on to the third set of those dumbbell box step overs. Lane number 17, Honda Nielsen making really quick work of these box step overs, not stopping at all. And she's done with her next set of six, and she moves on. Hannah Nielsen, lane 17, has 18 reps done already, and she's leading the way here in this heat one for the females. And with 11 minutes done, we still have 10 minutes left in this event. Honda Nielsen again advancing that box. She's already done with 24 reps. And she has opened up a bit of a lead here over the rest of the field. Let's see if she can hang on and finish strong here in this event five. Martina Krusiak, lane number 12, also done with 24 box step overs. But it is Hanna Nielsen. She's moving forward. And on lane 12, Martina Krysiak trying to catch up Hanne Nielsen. Already at the same level with Hanne, but no, Hanne moves forward and it's still your heat leader. 36 repetitions done for Hanne Nielsen, only 14 more to go. Hanna Nielsen again advancing that box. She's 42 reps in, eight more to go. Hanna Nielsen, lane 17. But on lane 16, Charlotte Spence is trying to catch up with her. But on lane seven and eight, Lisa Lendner and Pedra Sakoska are moving in and also trying to catch up. Hanna Nielsen, two more reps to go. She is on lane 17 in the blue, blue shorts and black sports bra. And Hanna Nielsen will be the first female to finish. 
the box step overs. Martina Krusiak, lane 12. Trying to work through those last few reps. Lane 16, Charlotte Spence. Also only a few more reps remaining here for her. Honda Nielsen has a two rep lead right now over Martina Krusiak. Martina finishing her two last box step overs as Honda Nielsen starts making her way towards the rig. Lane 16, Charlotte Spence is gonna finish up her step overs and start the lunges. And Honda Nielsen is going, looks like she's going unbroken on the first 50 feet of those lunges. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for these gorgeous female athletes on the floor here. Come on, show your support here. And Honda Nielsen is done with her first set of 50 feet lunges. And on the middle of the field right now, Martina Grisiak moving on to her 50 feet of lunges. Charlotte Spence, lane 16, also on those lunges. These ladies trying to chase down Honda Nielsen on lane 17. Asul, Asuna Krugstad on lane 14 is done with her step overs. But now lane number 17, Honda Nielsen getting ready for the last push, 50 feet of overhead walking lunges. Let's put those hands together. Keep that clap going, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up on 18 minutes, so we still have four more minutes to go before we get to that time cap of 22 minutes. Hanna Nielsen has about 25 feet to go here. She looks like she might be the first female in the world to finish this event. And Hanna Nielsen, one more step for her. Honda Nielsen just has to do one more segment more on the floor. She needs to get over that red line that you see on the floor, ladies and gentlemen, as Charlotte Spence next to her on lane 16, trying to catch up. Doesn't quite get there, but Charlotte is trying to rack up second place in the heat. Honda Nielsen, lane 17, 18.58. Unofficially. Now on the middle of the field, lanes 12, 13, and 14. Cena Krugstad, Laura Hughes, and Martina Krusiak fighting for the second place in the heat. And it's going to be Laura Hughes, lane 13, who gets second place in the heat. Charlotte Spence, third place. Sina Krugstad, lane 14, fourth place in the heat. 
And next up, it's Martina Krisia coming in. Lane number 10, Kelly Friel, just a few steps away. And here comes Kelly over the box and across the line. Great work. Ninety seconds to go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's show some love for these athletes right here. Make some noise, put your hands together. Lane 15, Maria Kursawa getting across the line. And next up we have lanes 8 and 9. Pedro one Zakonskaya. minute, one minute. Pedro Zakonska and Anita Tucker coming in. As Zakonska gets over. Thirty seconds to go, ladies and gentlemen. Help these ladies out here. Let's put those hands together. Come on, Berlin. Let's make some noise for these ladies. Still, Come every on. repetition counts. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make some noise. Ten seconds. Come on. Keep it up. Five seconds. Three. Two, one. Honda Nielsen takes the heat at 18.58 and sets the time to beat. Give it up for Honda and all the rest of these ladies. Welcome back as we close out event number five for the ladies here at the Velodrome in Berlin, Germany. Time for heat two of two at the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Europe Regional. Brandon Domain, Matt Jakobsen, Nikki Brazier, your typical group with you here in Germany. We will be joined by somebody, but we'll get to her in a second as we take a look at the point standings as it has been very tight in the race for fifth, the top four. Not so much, aside from that fight within those fours. Kristen Holta leading the way at 360. Laura Horvath in second at 352. Two points behind her is Annie Thor's daughter. Eight points behind her is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And then it's another 62 points back to fifth place. That bubble spot currently held down by Camila Solomonson Hellman. Ten points clear of Gabriella Magawa rounding out the top six. And really coming into this final day, looks like there's maybe three athletes that might be able to make that jump. There are, there are, but first they're going to have to make their way through event number five, which is, for time, 50 handstand push-ups, then under 50 toes to bars, then 50 calories on the assault bike, under 50 dumbbell box step-overs, then under 50 feet right arm overhead lunge, then finishing off with 50 feet left arm overhead lunge. The time cap is 22 minutes, and the ladies will be using 50, key, or 50 pound dumbbells. Second group of 20 to take on this opening event of day number three. Your points leader, Kristen Holta, will be in lane number 10. The bubble athlete, Camilla Sullivanson Hellman, will be in lane eight. And the first person one out, Gabriella Magawa, will be in lane number 13. But it's a, it's a longer event, and that's normally an indicator that you want to keep a look at Kristen Holta. She, she does thrive at the longer events. However, this is going to be challenging all the way through, and not all of these things play to her strength. Day three underway for the ladies here in the top 20 of the point standings as we come in to the final day of competition. It starts with 50 handstand push-ups, time to beat 18 minutes, 58 seconds by Hannah Nilsson in heat number one. We're seeing these girls attacking the, uh, the handstand push-ups really fast right away. 
And uh, we know from the from the in, in the past we've seen a couple of athletes actually blow themselves up by going way too fast in the handstand push-ups. Now you need to be fast, obviously, but you cannot overexert yourself this soon. And so, when we look at this uh, at this event, there are a couple of things that I think these athletes uh, are going to have to think about. And one of the things is the pace on the assault bike. Now you cannot go out too fast on that because you're going to get yourself in trouble a little bit later. That being said, a lot of changes in the field of, of play has happened on the assault bike earlier, so you need to pace it comfortably but fast. Next thing is small rest on the box holders. You're not going to be able to go all the time. So really th think about that fast, small rest, and last length of the stride. Make sure your, the stride isn't too long because it's going to end up meaning that you have to navigate the, uh, the dumbbell overhead. And just a little bit of wobble, it's going to be in a whole lot of trouble with a heavy dumbbell that far away from each other. Athletes making their way from the wall to the bar. First one to do so as we watch Annie Thorstadter now in second place. First one to do so on the far right side in the blue shirt that you're seeing every now and then uh, being blocked by the judge. Sarah Sigmundsdottir, 59 seconds through 50 handstand push-ups. We've yet to see anybody start out first off the handstand push-ups and maintain that. But if anybody's able to do so, it could be Sarah. So as we transition from the quickest part as what it has been to one of the slower parts in uh, this event with the 50 toes to bar, bring in our special guest, 2013 Games Champion Samantha Briggs. Sam, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. It's so exciting to be here on this last day. It's the, uh, the f first event for these ladies. And, and We've talked about it a lot where we're starting to see that how, how tight it has been. Now we're starting to see the separation for the top four, but we've got a great battle for that fifth and final spot. Oh, definitely. And this event followed by the sprint with the rope climb, I think you could see a lot of shifts going into that fifth place. It's just 62 points separating fifth place Camilla Solomonson Hellman all the way down to 10th place Turi Helgenotter. We pan around here at the rest of the field. One of the athletes that might be playing a spoiler role in this Jane Eady uh, in lane number one. She's sitting in the top five, it looks like, uh, here in the toes to bar, at least getting to the toes to bar. Judge's hand is up for Sarah Sigmund's daughter, also for Kristen Holta. It's Abby Holta one, Sigmund's daughter two. And Sam, we, we were just talking about some of the things that I think that you should be looking out for. What are your thoughts on the uh, on, on the event as such? Where do you think the key is? I think the longest time in the event is going to be on the box step overs. So that's when you can win or lose this event. Uh, you were saying, like, pace the assault bike. These girls aren't going to be taking that as a rest. You saw the time on the first heat. These girls are going to be going to sub 15. Yep. Oh, I didn't. I didn't mean that the Nini is arrested. I needed. They meant they didn't have to sprint it. So somewhere below sprint, but above active recovery. I think. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> so on, on the men's side, we, we've seen a couple different strategies, and in, in, in to that that point where we saw Andre Ganen on the men's side, last one to the bike, kind of took his time there, was freshest when he got to the box. He winds up winning this by over a minute. Uh, we've seen some athletes go out pretty hot, and they, they, they did maintain uh, on that men's side and, and able to finish in the top five or so. What, what kind of strategy would you employ here on this one? I think for these athletes, they're going to know their bodies and they will attest to this workout last weekend. I did a modified version of this workout last weekend with uh, Sarah and Emma McQuaid. And I know that both of them will have their strategies nailed down. They know what pace to be going on each of the movements. And I have no doubt that everyone in this heat will have tried it last weekend and will know exactly where they can push and where they need to hold back a little bit. And so I've got I've, I've been thinking about this, and I'm, I'm happy you're here so I can actually ask you about it. So at this point of the of the competition, let's say that you have a strategy, and you go out there, and you see that everybody else is just going so much faster. Do you adjust that strategy, or do you just kind of stick with your guns? And if you adjust, is there a certain point where you get, if I get past this, I'm racing everybody. Up until then, I'm sticking to my plan. 
I think it depends on whereabouts in the workout. When you come to the box step overs, there's only one more movement after, which is the lunges. If you've got a strategy for the handstand push-ups and people are ahead at you, it's a little bit early to be changing your game plan because then it could ruin you for the rest of the workout. Yep. On the screen right now, left side, Annie Thor's daughter, right side, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Sarah, first one through the handstand push-ups and to the toes to bar, but second one away from those toes to bar and to the bike. This is Kristen Volta with the first time to get onto that bike. But uh, as you were talking about earlier, Mads, one of the athletes that there's going to be some difficulties for her in this based on, based on her background, at least. Well, I mean, she, she's used to these longer, grueling workouts, and we usually see her thrive in them. That being said, the dumbbell, as opposed to your body weight, is going to have is going to be an, an issue as well. And we know that Kristen has gotten stronger over the uh, over the last year. But if you look at her next to somebody like Sarah, you look like you look at Laura Horvath, then you just then you know that they're going to have slightly easier time over the box. See two judges' hands up in lanes next to each other. It's for Annie Thorstadter and Kristen Holta. Holta actually with the hand up first. Thorstadter will be the first one through those final five. And Annie Thorstadter will give us our third lead change through the three movements thus far. Six minutes, 40 seconds to get to the box for the first time. So they will advance that box every six reps on this dumbbell box step over. Looks like she just picked up a pair of uh, grocery shopping bags and just stepping over there. Sam, I'm curious. Uh, we've seen any variation of what we can do with the box. We've seen the burpee box jump overs, box jump overs in general, all these different things. How shocked were you to see dumbbell box step overs show up in the uh, regionals? Uh, I think it plays back to the Invitational that was held in Berlin when it was Team World versus Team USA. We saw the dumbbell step over the box for the first time then, uh, be it with a burpee dumbbell step over, but it's a bit of a nods back to when that movement was first aired, so I like it. These athletes always needing to do their homework. As you can see, the field separate as those boxes will move every six reps. 12 reps complete, working towards 18 for Thor's daughter, now for Sigmund's daughter. Between them, in the black sports bra, red shorts, Kristen Holta, black top, white shorts, Laura Horvath, one, two, three, four. The points is one, two, three, four in the event. So when that event showed up in, at the Invitationals in Berlin, I'm pretty sure you were there. And how did that feel the first time you did that? Like, was it a new movement for you, or was it something that you would kind of come up with yourself at home? Like, I, want, I want to try that. It was a new movement. Uh, as an accessory movement, I'm sure a lot of the athletes would have done box step-ups, traditionally with a bar on the back or in the front rack. So to then have to hold two heavy dumbbells and work your way over the box, uh, it was definitely a new one and trying to strategize that it was definitely made harder because we had to be synchronized at the time. This is, this is true. One thing you'll notice, a lot of the girls in this heat compared to the other heat are using more of a sidestep over the box. They've just come off the bike where it's a very frontal movement. They've then got to do walking lunges, which again is going to be that frontal plane. So utilizing more of a sidestep is going to be fatiguing the glutes more on the uh, sidewards movement so that they'll hopefully feel fresher when it comes to the walking lunge. That lunge may very well be the difference maker as we've got four athletes within about eight reps of each other. Laura Horvath has moved into third. You see her in black and white, two lanes over from Andy Thor's daughter, who continues to be the leader by six reps over both Sigmund's daughter and Horvath. Holta starting to fade just a little bit here on the box step overs, as she still holds on to fourth, but about 12 reps back from the lead. 
just impressed at the cadence of the step over the box that these athletes are maintaining. Now that they started out hot and heavy, that's not super surprising, but being able to hold on to that pace, that is impressive. So Sam, we've seen a couple of athletes who have who kind of utilized a bit of a swing with the dumbbells and then just kind of following that momentum over, whereas others kind of maintain the dumbbells really close to their thighs, step up and walk over. What would you, uh, any thoughts on the different, different techniques? I would definitely be utilizing a little bit of a swing, uh, getting those dumbbells moving and utilizing that momentum will help with that initial step up and over. Yeah. I think for most of the girls, it's not really going to be the leg fatigue that's holding them. It's going to be actually their grip and holding on to the dumbbells whilst they're stepping. Now you did allude a little bit to the uh, to the next event where they're going to be have to use their grip again. How how much of a difference is this going to make? Are they going to be able to recover, or are they not going to be able to recover? What do you think? I think it's quite a short turnover between this event and the next one. So, like we saw yesterday with people feeling the effect of the bench press with the handstand walk, that's going to be magnified. They're going to have an hour between holding on to those dumbbells for dear life to then hanging on to a rope so they don't drop. <laughs> Annie Thoris daughter through the box step overs and making her way to the dumbbell. She continues to hold a lead of just two reps over Laura Horvath. Now those are two athletes in the top four. Third and fourth in this event are Sigmund Sauter and Holta also in the top four. Keep an eye in the Dark blue lane, one over from Annie Thorstadter to the left. Black top, black shorts. That is fifth place, Camilla Solomonson Hellman, as she is level with Gabby Magawa in the black top green shorts towards the right side of the screen. But ahead of Karin Froyova, another one of the athletes in contention for those five spots. So Solomonson Hellman doing pretty well in trying to protect that fifth position. She's going to have to hold on to it. We've seen Magala come really strong at the end of events earlier. So I wouldn't be surprised if she's actually been planning this pace and has kind of set herself up, herself up for a little bit of a sprint. And one thing we might be able to say now is always trust the opinion of Sam Briggs because she said, sub 15, we're well on our way to that. Annie Thorstadter at the turnaround at 12 minutes and 40 seconds, just 50 feet of a walking lunge remaining. She's handled herself uh, really, really well in this event. Came out fast after the handstand push-ups and held on. Race for second in blue. Sarah Sigmundsdotter in black. Laura Horvath, she has that position. She's also just ahead of Sigmundsdotter by 10 points in second and fourth. Thorstadter third entering this event. Just 10 points behind Holta, the points leader, is looking to pick up 100 valuable points. And she's halfway through the overhead walking lunge with the left arm at extension. See a bit of a smile starting to creep up there from Annie as she's closing in. A little bit of a stability issue. Good control, got to get past the red line, not that white line. Both feet have to be by it. And Annie Thor's daughter will take the win for the first time this weekend and might find herself atop the leaderboard going into the final event, 13.48. We've got Sarah Sigmund's daughter about to finish off. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, she lost the dumbbell. I'm, I'm not sure if there was a collision or if she just dropped it with the way that it came out of her hand, but this might be costly because here's Laura Horvath. Horvath, one lane underneath her in black and white, but she shuffled her feet. She's got to go back to the last completed segment. Sigmund's daughter with the dumbbell back up at extension. She's a couple of steps away, trying to regain her composure here in her balance. One lunge left. She's clear on the line, and she'll take second place in the heat, second in the event, and that's 94 points for Sigmund's daughter. She's got, she has got to be very happy with that performance. Laura Horvath, a couple of lunges away from completing this event herself, as nobody else has made the turnaround point, I do believe. Actually, take that back in lane 20, we do have one, but it's Horvath in third. So second, third, and fourth of the point standings will be the top three finishers in the event. And I take that back about lane 20. That was on the box step over. The box was blocked from my view there. Sorry about that. So we're waiting on somebody to make the turnaround, and that somebody Emma will McQuaid. be Emma McQuaid in lane number 16. 
Wow, sub-15 was dead on for three athletes. And we do have an epic fight down here at the turning point. We've got Christine Holt who just made it to the turning point. Michaela Megala is also at the turning point. And Camila Solomons and Helma as so well. So huge on so many levels in the points race. As Kristen Holt, the points leader, might be seeing that fade. And she's being passed by both Magawa and Solomonson Hellman, who are fighting for the fifth and final qualifying spot. Emma McQuaid is going to add some points to the equation here. As she's seven feet away from finishing this event. She's in black and red near the top of the screen. Magawa, second out of those, making their way back to that line. Saw her in black and green. McQuaid will be the fourth finisher here in this heat. And it'll be good for fourth in the event as well at 15.56. Magawa leading the way over Holta and Solomonson Hellman. Here's Holta on the right, Solomonson Hellman on the left. Holta will come down with the dumbbells. Magawa is finished across the line, and she will reach the finish mat at 16.13. And she might be finding herself back into the top five. Solomonson Hellman, black top, black shorts, near the center of the screen. Two lanes above her is Holta in black and red. Again, 18.58 was the prior time to beat. We're still two and a half minutes away from times becoming a factor. And near the top of the screen, Turi Helgadotter in the camo pants is starting to make a, cha a charge. And she's actually gonna possibly pass Solomonson Hellman, who went around the box. I'm not sure if that's gonna stand. Helgadotter is in just behind her. And Holta dropping the dumbbells yet again. And it's safe to say we're gonna see a change atop the points leaderboard as she can't get this final lunge to go. She needs to look out for Bjork Odin's daughter. You see her on the right side of the screen, 10 feet away. This is huge for Holta, trying to get this final lunge, and she will just ahead of Odin's daughter. Eighth in the heat, eighth in the event for Holta, ninth for Odin's daughter. And we just got chaos here in Germany. This is gonna shake some things up. This is definitely gonna shake some things up. It's gonna be exciting going into that final event. In hindsight, I, I'm starting to wish that this was the final event with how much chaos we're seeing on these final 50 feet of lunges. Taking a look elsewhere, Karin Freyova, another one of the athletes that are fighting for those that fifth spot, 20 points behind Solomons and Hellman. She'll be losing some ground. Well, I'm pretty sure that some of these athletes are going to wish it was the, the final event as well. <laughs> I think when they get onto the road climbs, they're going to be wishing that. <laughs> This had to be in the last one for sure. But what do you do to recover? Like, what what can you possibly physically do? What would you go out and do? Uh, this isn't about what they can do this weekend. This is about what sort of training they've been done. How much work have they been doing on grip strength? Have they been doing workouts where they push their grip to the limit and had to recover quickly by doing something like rope climbs? It's not unusual that we've seen the rope climbs in the final event, so it shouldn't have come as a surprise to these athletes. So no massage or ice baths or anything like that is going to help them out now. It's what they did six months to a year ago. Yeah, unfortunately, there's only so much a, a <laughs> massage can do. I do want to clarify one thing. I did, I did make the comment that uh, I'm not sure if going around the box was going to stand. Most of the time this weekend, if you go around the object at the end of the lane, it's actually a penalty. You have to go over it. The box, we've seen so many people do it out of just habit at this point. Uh, it is okay to be going around the box. We have seen more athletes too that did want to clarify that uh, for everybody at home. As we are two and a half minutes away from the 22 minute time cap, and there's not going to be many athletes that actually fall victim to that. Now they're setting an again impressive, an impressive pace right here. Strong athletes, which is why they're in this heat at regionals. Next finisher, Emma Tall. And she'll make her way. Oh, she's gonna get a no rep here. I think that's a little bit harsh considering everybody else has been fatigued with the dumbbells at the end. And 
honestly not sure what the no rep was, was for them. He said because he drops them instead of lowering them. Good, good eye there, dropping the dumbbells. And that will actually cost her a position as the Eminent will pass her. And there's Emma Tal making her way to the finish mat. We'll have a handful of athletes left as uh, 16 of the 20 have already come in. We still have 90 seconds remaining. And so in the overhead lunge, how much is about your overhead position and how much is strength? So if you've got a great overhead position, is that gonna be, can you can you work your way around the, 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 the strength component or does it have to be in sync kind of? I think at that way, strength comes into play. But because of the awkwardness of uh, having one dumbbell on the shoulder and then having to hold overhead, if you have a good hold overhead position, you can lock that dumbbell in place. Instead of having to fight to keep it up there, so if you're not one of the stronger athletes, working on position and mobility will definitely help you in events like this. Yep. Final 30 seconds, the crowd starting to get into this for our final few athletes as four are left on the floor. All of them at this point working on the walking lunge. Edie will be the closest one to finishing with the final 15 seconds. Doesn't appear that will be a successful trip all the way down the floor as 10 seconds remain. And as the time cap approaches and hits, the top four continue to separate themselves, but they're gonna be thrown into a jumble and that race for fifth might have gotten even closer for a few athletes as we have one event remaining. But Annie Thor's daughter left no doubt, 13 minutes, 48 seconds. So let's have a look at what Annie did to put herself in a position where, where she can hands and where she can do a high five and chest bumps on the way out. On the handstand push-up, she was relentless. She's going really, really fast, working well with her legs and her hips, creating that upper momentum. We know that toes to bar is something that Annie thrives on. She did really great at stringing big sets together. On the bike, looked like she was taking it a little bit easier, kind of composing herself before she got onto the box step overs. And once there, like I said, looked like grocery bags. Just really strong, really well-rounded on the box. And here's that Annie smile right there. Solid overhead position, lunging her way to goal. And congratulations. Took the lead on the bike and never looked back. Annie Thor's daughter is with Nikki Frazier. So yesterday we were talking about how deep the field is this year for the women. I think you never feel that more than when there are 20 of you out there at a time. So what do you do to stay focused on, on your performance and your job here? Well, that's what I love about these kind of workouts because it's, you don't know by just the start. It's such a long event, but you kind of need to stick to your game plan. And that was hard for me when I wasn't, I knew I wouldn't be the first one to the bike, but I kind of wanted to have a lead on certain girls getting to the bike. I'm like, damn, maybe I should hit it a little bit harder, but that's where you need to like, Take a step back in your mind, know what you want to do and stick with your game plan. I knew that the step overs would be where it would be kind of one on and then being fresh for the lunges. And I had specific strategy on the step overs. I do think this can be done faster because I miscounted and I thought it was done when I had six and two left. <laughs> so I like put it down. I definitely would have done those on Rogan, but it's, I love that because you can see where the other girls and you can feel it because you need to take that break and breathe and you can use that to push you to go even harder. That was an awesome way to go into this final event. Great job. Thank you. A 20th career regional event win for Annie Thorstadter, tied for second all time with Ben Smith now if you combine men's and women's win totals. And it might be putting her atop the points leaderboard as she came into this event 10 points behind Kristen Holta who did struggle for the first time all weekend. Thoris daughter, 13 minutes, 48 seconds. She said it can be done faster. It's gonna be a hard challenge on anybody in the world. As she takes this one by 40 seconds over Sarah Sigmund's daughter, Laura Horvath in third at 14.46. Emma McQuaid takes fourth. Gabriella Magawa in fifth as she tries to make her way back into the top five. But Camilla Solomonson-Hellman did a solid job at protecting that position 
as she was 10 points clear of Magawa in sixth coming into this event. And with these four athletes, Holta, Horvath, Thorstadter, Sigmundstadter, that are so far ahead of the rest of the field coming into this one, going forward into the season, they look pretty good at this point uh, going to the games. How do you feel about these, these women that are going to be going to the games in Madison with the depth that we've seen here in Europe? I think it's become apparent in the past few years how well the European athletes do. Uh, like last year, for example, Kristen was up in the top 10, I was up in the top 10, you had Annie there, Sarah there, even though Catherine's out of the US now, she's in the top 10. We're breeding them good here in Europe. <laughs> And it will be a force to be reckoned with uh, coming to the games. We still got to finalize those five spots with one event remaining and figure out who the fifth person will be, of course. That coming up in just a little bit. Sam, thank you once again for joining us today. Also, thanking you for joining us all weekend long here uh, and what has been a great weekend to this point in Germany. As we wrap up our coverage here in event number five, one event remains for the men and the women, and we've seen chaos from start to finish this weekend. Well, I say finish because we got one event left, but chaos is expected once again in what will be the fastest event of the weekend. That is coming up next here in Berlin.